And we see that cooperation happening on a regular basis between groups in South Asia, groups in Southeast Asia, and further afield in East Asia, Europe, and other countries. We even see cooperation between a group called FARC in Colombia and ISIS in Syria, essentially doing narco trade and trying to, uh, one party is selling arms and the other party is selling drugs. So this is the kind of seamless connection we are talking about. Similarly, no country can seal its own borders and rely on self-defense and participate in today's global economy. One of the themes of this particular dialogue and forums of this nature, or all our collective endeavors between our two organizations in our two countries, is essentially to foster greater connectivity and cooperation. So we are encouraging people-to-people -people contact, we are encouraging free movement, but the flip side of that is, how do we then protect ourselves against these escalating threats? I've already talked about the Bangkok bomb attack. I'd like to re-emphasize that, that it shows how multi-regional linkages can happen. A group of people from a certain region in China, attack taking place in Thailand in Southeast Asia, transiting through Bangladesh and India, eventually leading up in the Middle East. So it almost becomes a global affair if we go down to the nuts and bolts of this particular attack. And I think the Bangkok bomb attack is a good example of how <coughs> terrorist groups exploit their transnational linkages. And again, it increases the need for greater cooperation between our countries. Cyber radicalization, my previous speaker has talked very articulately about this issue, is a very big issue. And coupled with that is the issue of cyber crime, which is also another important aspect. Uh, Bangladesh Institute of Peace and Security Studies has been working extensively on cybersecurity issues along with international partners and we see that the aspect of online radicalization and other loopholes that exist in cybersecurity are a critical challenge for Bangladesh and also for the wider region and the absence of proper cooperation further increases this challenge for us. We therefore need cooperation and capacity building of forces. What we would like to propose is that there, the Chinese forces already have significant capability in terms of dealing with counterterrorism and radicalization, and perhaps there can be a tangible cooperation between two countries in terms of uh, capacity building, greater training cooperation. We already have excellent training cooperation between our two militaries, but perhaps it can be enhanced a bit further to focus more on this issue of counterterrorism and radicalization. Cooperation in dealing with terrorist financing is very important. Unless we can stop the flow of money coming into the hands of terrorist organizations, we will never be able to properly meet this challenge. And therefore, there is a great opportunity for both countries to work together, for our central banks to work together, for the governments to work together, for financial institutions to work together, in enhancing cooperation in dealing with terrorist financing. Similarly, intelligence sharing or information sharing between our security agencies and governments is again a very pivotal requirement, and especially given the recent precedent of connections between regional terrorist organizations, I think this particular aspect attains greater importance. Similarly, we also need to understand that terrorists are constantly changing their tactics and trying to improve their capabilities. For instance, just yesterday, most Bangladeshis were very surprised when a very advanced sniper rifle was found during a raid on a terrorist hideout in the city of Chittagong. By taking a cue from that, we are proposing that there should be also some dialogue on cooperation, on understanding or on enhancing our understanding on chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear terrorism issues. Because while it may not be a challenge for us at the present moment, but we need to be prepared for challenges that could emerge in the future. India and China have a very famous exercise which is called Hand in Hand. It has been going on for a number of years and has been very successful in confidence building. Uh, we would like to propose, I think my previous presenter also alluded to this, that there should be a joint exercise between Bangladesh and China on counterterrorism. The joint exercise could perhaps start as a tabletop exercise initially and later move.
to a major exercise involving troops and law enforcement agencies. It will enable both countries to enhance interoperability, attain greater understanding about each other's best practices, and enable Bangladesh and China to work better together at different levels on counterterrorism. I am particularly pleased with the idea proffered by Ms. Zhu about uh, annual summit on counterterrorism and radicalization between Yunnan and Bangladesh. Such a conference or summit or even a dialogue could lay the foundation for creating a bilateral countering violent extremism or counterterrorism framework. It could also potentially lead to developing a bilateral or potentially a regional strategic communication plan. Because I would like to reiterate what my previous presenter has said, that unless we are able to counter the propaganda of terrorist organizations, we will never be able to win this battle. Law enforcement agencies are at the vanguard of any effort to counter terrorism or radicalization. Therefore, joint training and developing interoperability between our law enforcement and security agencies between Bangladesh and China is of critical importance. And this will also allow Bangladesh to have a greater understanding of the threats faced by China and vice versa. Both our countries have multiple best practices. There are areas in which we can learn from China, and there are areas where Bangladesh can share some perspectives or some experiences which have been successful with our friends in China. So therefore, sharing of best practices is very critical. I would also like to propose that we should look at undertaking joint threat assessments. I, I know that China does that with other countries as well, and Bangladesh also does that with other countries. It would be quite useful if we could undertake joint threat assessments of a particular group affecting a particular region that will only enable us to fashion our strategies properly. Cooperation on cybersecurity is increasingly going to become very important because a large portion of the threat from terrorism and radicalization will essentially manifest itself through cyberspace. And therefore, we need to coordinate with each other better on how we can counter terrorist propaganda in cyberspace, how we can stop groups like ISIS from radicalizing impressionable young minds towards the path of terrorism. Terrorism also has a link with maritime security. Uh, in the previous session, there was a discussion about piracy, and as this new idea of one belt, one road is being materialized, we need to be cognizant that the threat of terrorism could also impede this progress. So we need greater dialogue between China and Bangladesh on maritime security, and an aspect of that could also focus on how terrorism can affect in the maritime domain as well. Ladies and gentlemen, I would just like to offer, so I end my presentation with some concluding thoughts. Firstly, operational terrorism is only part of the challenge. Quite often our efforts are fully focused on essentially operational counterterrorism. But we need to move the conversation towards countering violent extremism and need to focus more on counter-extremism measures. Because as I have showed at the beginning, unless we can stem the tide of radicalization and extremism, just fighting terrorist groups at an operational level will not be sufficient. We also need to look at counter-radicalization measures from the grassroots level. We need to understand how people are radicalized at the rural areas and how people are radicalized at the urban areas, and how different strategies are required to therefore counter-radicalization. We need to understand the issue of corruption, governance, and service delivery. It's, there's a great example for us from what China has done in recent years, recognizing the problem of corruption and taking very important steps to stem corruption or fight corruption. This could offer a good lesson for countries like Bangladesh on how corruption can be fought, how governance can be improved, and how service delivery can be ensured. Whenever we go for conferences and when there is talk about economic development, one of the most important examples that is given is how China within a very short span of time has been able to uplift a large portion of its population out of poverty. That is a very important example for countries like Bangladesh, that how solving the problem of poverty or lifting people out of poverty can essentially act as a deterrent against many problems, including radicalization and terrorism. 
So poverty, eradication, development, governance, these issues are not divorced from the issue of terrorism, but rather they are inextricably linked. No country can fight this problem alone. As I have shown through various slides, the problem is increasingly interlinked and groups don't operate in isolation. In an increasingly globalized world, as the terrorist and radical organizations cooperate, so do we also need to cooperate. We have cooperation between groups, we need to have cooperation between states. We not only need cooperation at a bilateral level, we also need to look at how regional frameworks like PCIM and other frameworks that exist between China and Bangladesh can work towards greater cooperation on this issue. And finally, as a security analyst, this is a point I always like to make. We are, the threat is real. We are faced with a very significant threat. And as myself and my countrymen in Bangladesh are experiencing, uh, the number of attacks that we have experienced in the last 90 days just show us that there are a group of people who are willing to wage any amount of violence to change our way of life change the way we look at society and change the entire socio-political order and it is therefore incumbent upon us as the countering violent extremism response community all of us in this room and outside to work together to fight this challenge thank you very much 两位研究员就应对反击进反恐的这个做得很好的发言他提出了这个一是在执法安全上开展合作二呢是举办高级别的这个防恐峰会三这个信息共享四呢是宣传我们是在人才的这个培训上开展合作那么这个这个呃朱山研究员还提出了我们呃滇梦之间的防恐合作
youth problem and also the illegal belief differences. 刚才穆丽尔先生也说到，呃，九月份到十月份在孟加拉北部，呃，发生了多起的这个恐怖活动。那么我就想起去年三月份，在中国这个昆明，呃，发生的这个恐怖主义袭击。那么也就是说，刚才这个穆丽尔先生说了，恐怖主义无所不在，那么就在我们身边。所以，针对目前世界。恐怖主义，包括集体组织也好，包括这个其他恐恐怖主义也好，在世界各地啊，呃，都存在。那么就说，呃，在这样一个严峻的形势之下，呃，孟姐先生提出要加强反恐的世界合作。And uh, uh, just now, Mr. Munir really just uh, gave us a picture uh, on what has happened. It's really uh, we felt great sympathy for Rose. Threats are real, and it is, is really just uh, wizards all the time. So either, uh, the, uh, as a matter of fact, either it, it is the ISIS or just some other organizations, uh, we really just face a very severe situation right now. 同时呢，孟美尔先生提出了很多呃有建设性的一些建议，比如说他提出的啊，要加强在。防恐各个领域的这个合作，比如说，要首先是要提升这种能力建设的这个这个合作，呃，同时呢，第二呢，要呃加强这种情报信息的一共享，啊、呃，情报信息的共享。第三呢，呃，要加强省邦之间的一种合作，省邦之间的一种合作。Uh, as a matter of fact, that uh, uh, also Mr. Munir, based on the uh, background you introduced, you just proposers uh, and constructively. You mentioned that uh, first of all we should also enhance the uh, counter terrorism cooperation, especially the first we should just do the capacity building, and also we should just have the intelligence sharing, as well as we should have the state to state cooperation at each level. 同时呢，要借鉴一些成功经验，要比如说他提出要，呃，建立中共之间的一种防恐的合作机制，呃，同时呢，要从根本上来来来阐述这个这个这个恐怖主义呢，那么呃，最关键的措施，呃、他提出来要通过、呃、经济社会的发展，尤其是发展经济，那么呢，消除贫困，提高这个这个呃当地人民的这个生活水平，提高政府的管理能力等等。那么这些对策建议啊，啊，具有很强的这个针对性。And also you, you mentioned about the we need to just adopt the good experience internationally and uh, uh, try to also set up a Sino Bangladesh platform and also uh, we just need to just uh, attack or just counter the terrorism from the uh, root, yeah. From the roots, and also uh, you, uh, uh, you've also mentioned that we need to improve the social uh, wellness, especially the people's living standard, by just improvement of the govern governance <coughs> of the government, and also uh, uh, try to just uh, eliminate most of the corruption and yeah, something like that. It's really a very uh, good suggestion, very constructive. So that's all for my uh, summary. So if you have any questions, please free, feel free. Well, any comments? Thank you very much. Uh, I have a question on the previous Mrs. Zhu. So uh, your uh, presentation. So because uh, she has given a good picture of how China perceives uh, the future of 
terrorism and anti radicalism which is of course an US agenda, you see, because the US has been fighting this anti-terrorism for the last uh, 14 years. And i just give you one example. Only in Afghanistan, they spent 700 billion in the last 14 years. And the terrorism is rising, you see. And the U.S. is, uh, you know, uh, gradually, its all efforts are going, uh, dwindling, you know, or, you know, lowering. So uh, that's, uh, that's the lesson, you see. So why China thinks, is one, that uh, so in a big way, anti-radicalization or anti-terrorist. Why? That's one question. And the second is, I'm very impressed by her one uh, remarks that we have to take interest of all parties. But uh, good China, really, and you include also India, you see, uh, that uh, all the regional states, of course, Bangladesh is there. And also other uh, Thailand will be there. So, what type of uh, framework you are talking about? When you talk about uh, to take into account, uh, because we see that in any uh, framework or strategy, a strategy is second. I'm talking about even the partners. You know, the dominant partners actually they have the main agenda. You see. So, if China makes friendship uh, or you know have want to take all the common interests. So what should be the basis to determine that common interest, you see? So that's my second question. Thank you very much. Uh, because uh, uh, Mr. Zhu is not the expert in the uh, uh, anti 
terrorist. She's only uh, just a research fellow, so she's not. She has no uh, the first hand material for your uh, more materials for your first questions. So we might make you disappoint for this part. But for the second part, she mentioned about the anti-radical. Anti-radical actually, uh, we just uh, select our partner actually that uh, based on their uh, mutual interests. Yeah, like you are more interested in about how we can just find out uh, their common interests. Uh, su such as um, something happening in Kunming, we have the anti-radical uh, anti uh, cooperation with the local people because we were, would like to just have a Kunming electric power station and the, then some of the uh, local people, they think their interests were, will be influenced and then they just uh, uh, let the other people, uh, everyone said this will just uh, impact our local environment and the people go to the Yunnan provincial government to fight against about this project. But finally, uh, as a government representative, they try to comfort the people that uh, to give them evidence that this is actually uh, no in impact uh, on the environment and we will protect your interest first. You are the people, uh, common people, we will stand on your shoes and then something like that, then we just uh, share our interest together. So and this is only an example on how we can just uh, cooperate, not only inland, but also internal affairs, but also external affairs. Also, we adopt the same philosophy. So is that OK? Yeah. But it's, so it's not a global. Uh, it's it's global, like, like she said. But not we didn't have very um, specific, uh, different uh, uh, framework towards different countries. Yeah. Thank you very much. I have very two very short questions. One to Madame and one to Mr. Muri. Uh, Madame uh, discussed in her paper uh, about the you know, spread of um, this radicalization or radical groups. Now, do you, does she feel, or do China, does China feel that this radicalization or radical groups in Bangladesh will have an impact in China? Or another thing is that from Pakistan also, do you perceive any such threats? And do you have any framework, like she suggested, that Bangladesh and China should cooperate in uh, preventing this kind of uh, incidents through this forum? Uh, do you have such forum in Pakistan? And uh, to Mr. Muri, that is also very short, that you mentioned various factors about the radicalization in Bangladesh society, although it is not yet that big a threat, but it is a threat, you know, if you take into consideration about last four months' incidents, nine incidents in four months. But I think, you know, <laughs> I don't know whether I should mention this or not, but Saudi Arabia, you know, has an agenda, this is not an official agenda, to push their version of Islam and export that Islam into other countries like Bangladesh. Because Saudi Islam is different, uh, which is extreme uh, uh, Islamic Islam and also very intolerant. So this, I think, we should include as a factor, you know, uh, for spreading radicalism in Bangladesh. So, what does Mr. Muni has to say about it? Mike, please. Would you dare?
这个现在据我了解，就是说这个专门的对话机对这两个国家，那那我我我的了解呢是暂时还没有，啊，然后呢，我今天提出来的这个合作呢，还只是个框架式的、框架式的建议。我们呢准备是这样。我们是政府的一个决策咨询部门，我回去的就像刚才我这个发言里说的，我们要向我们中央政府建议，呃，就是我们已经有有了中印合作的这个先例了，那么我们回去呢，要由我们来起草一个报告，呃，向我们先向先打给我们省政府建议，建议呢由我们公安部和这个孟加拉这边的，就是这个安全负责的部门。联合来促成这个，就是这个机制的建立，这个峰会的促成这个峰会。然后我们的省政府呢，又在要争取国家的支持，向国家的公安部建议，然后由公安部出面构构成两国的这个合作安全机制的建设建设。包括那个就是巴基斯坦的也是一样，是吧 ？As a matter of fact, uh, that uh, just now Ms. Zhu mentioned about the mechanism which uh. The joint, yeah, uh, cooperation, uh, just fighting against the terrorism is only still an idea, yeah, for Yunnan provincial government. And like we mentioned, the Indian case, uh, it's already uh, something happened. So we hope that uh, through this platform, after we going back, we as a policy making suggest, uh, we would like to write a proposal to our Yunnan provincial government, and then. The government, with this proposal, will go to the Ministry of our Public Security, and then, uh, if they uh, both sides agree, or maybe they make mutual visits, and then uh, I think that in the near future, this mechanism will be set up very soon. Uh, it's also the same case as Pakistan. We will also try to just establish such platform as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Madam, in reply to your question, I would like to start by saying that uh, terrorism and radicalization uh, was a major problem for Bangladesh 10 years ago. Then post-2006 or post-2007, it dropped to a large extent because of uh, the efforts by successive governments in degrading the operational capabilities of Bangladesh-based terrorist groups. But in the last one year, especially since February 2014, it has again emerged as a critical security challenge for Bangladesh. And I'd just like to clarify one point. What I, made, uh, what I said earlier was that nine attacks in the last three months have been claimed by ISIS. But the actual number of attacks is much higher than nine. The actual number of attacks would be somewhere around 25 or 30. Yeah. But nine of these attacks of various scales, including a suicide bomb blast in an Ahmadiyya community mosque on Christmas Day, was claimed by ISIS. So it just shows all of us in this room how significant the challenge is right now. <coughs> Especially for a country like Bangladesh, which is faced with a number of other challenges like poverty, development, climate change. Uh, we now have to increasingly worry about fighting terrorism and radicalization as well. To delve more specifically into your question, Madam, about the agenda that certain countries like Saudi Arabia have, <coughs> excuse me, we recognize those issues. I think within Islam or within the Muslim communities across the world, there are challenges within. There are multiple different ideologies, there are sectarian strife. Uh, some scholars have already written volumes on it to show how the emergence of ISIS is essentially a result of Shia versus Sunni strife. We see that in other parts of the world, we see that in Southeast Asia, we see that in East Asia. <coughs> Sorry, we see that in South Asia as well. But if we take a step back from, I mean, those problems are definitely there and we have to work within uh, those constraints. But we also, there are also other problems which are fueling terrorism and radicalization, which are 
different from that. And there is an opportunity, therefore, for countries to work together. There is an opportunity for countries like Bangladesh and China, particularly, to work together. And also, within Islam, there needs to be greater debate and discussion among Muslims and among countries within the Islamic uh, world on how we can reduce the sectarian divisions and how we can forge a common ground. Because the more divisions we create, it is giving more opportunity to radical groups and terrorist organizations. And in Bangladesh, we are <coughs> acutely facing that right now. Uh, just to give you a small statistic, uh, for 400 years, there has never been any violence against the Shia community in Bangladesh. Unfortunately, however, in 2015 alone, there have been two major attacks, including a gun attack inside a mosque in which several people were killed, and a bomb blast at one of the major Shia processions in Dhaka, and now a very unfortunate incident in the mosque of another Ahmadiyya community. So for Bangladeshis, uh, all of us present in this room, we have never seen that in our country a mosque can be attacked or people can be attacked while they're praying, whereas in the last one month alone there have been at least three or four attacks, including one just a few days ago. So it's just a stark reminder of the challenge that we are faced with, both within Bangladesh and globally, and therefore the importance for us all to work together. Thank you. Excuse me. Now, I posed a question in the context that Saudi Arabia was <coughs> one of the one of the countries which was instrumental in creating ISIS. And the attacks we have in Bangladesh on the minority community within Islam is an agenda of Saudi Arabia and ISIS. How can you say that? Look at the pattern. Look at the pattern. You can you can think of anything. You know, have to have evidence. So we can't uh, just uh, be a particular country and just uh, be a little Sorry, can I just... Uh, the First of all, you know, I... Uh, sorry, I, I think uh, what uh, Shabkat said is uh, the correct uh, trend, you know. I'm not saying that uh, Bangladesh society is overwhelmed with you know, no, but this trend is very serious. It never happened in Bangladesh, so that's why. And it has nothing to do with Saudi Arabia or our, yes, you know, yes. it has nothing to do it was with. Used them, actually, by the yes, and uh, we can't just, you know, because Saudi Arabia is in fact uh, one of the partnering countries against the ISIS. It's fighting against the ISIS. Yes, there are many forces which are created and which turn against the creator. It happens. So you create something, but you know, uh, like human beings, we, we in our religion we sometimes say that we are created by God, but sometimes we are against God. Sometimes it happens. That's a different thing. But uh, our assessment is, and uh, I think uh, China, be Yunnan becomes so close country. You see the facilitation of communication. And uh, we are so close in terms of territory. Only, I don't know, it's, uh, we, we flew half an hour, you see, and then we found from Dhaka, you see, the economy. So that's why we are a bit worried, and we have a mutual interest there. Thank you. Uh, I think the professor has very aptly summed up um, what the challenge is. I think the key issue here is that uh, increasingly, the threat of terrorism will become more transnational in nature. Uh, if we look at uh, 15 years ago, it was essentially a domestic threat which manifested itself in domestic man. There was terrorism in Bangladesh in the late 90s, for instance. But we never thought or we never imagined it to have any impact beyond Bangladesh. But today, Bangladeshi terrorist group is operating sleeper cells in states within India. Today, a militant from after uh, carrying out a bomb blast in Bangkok transits through Bangladesh and goes to Syria. Uh, we have uh, linkages between uh, Bang or uh, Bangladeshi nationals are getting apprehended in Singapore and then extradited to Bangladesh on charges of terrorism. So it is increasingly becoming a transnational phenomenon 
And I think the emergence of ISIS has, was further contributed to that factor. So what we really need to do, therefore, and I think that's why this session is very significant, is that we need greater transnational cooperation. And as the professor very rightly mentioned, uh, China and Bangladesh are almost neighbors. I mean, we may, be, may not have a direct border like you do with India, but we are almost neighbors. We are only um, divided or only uh, sort of, uh, we have only a small sliver of territory between us separating our two countries. So I think there's a greater degree of cooperation, and it's a good thing that we already have a robust security cooperation mechanism between our two countries. So Bangladesh military probably has the highest amount of exchange and cooperation with China. So we can probably look at it more closely now and see how we can utilize existing cooperation mechanisms to further work towards counterterrorism and move uh, and involve multiple different organs uh, and basically share best practices, knowledge, information, and fashion a common strategy. Because increasingly, we are going to face this threat together. Thank you. If, if there is a time, just to which It happens, you know, just in my mind. So I, uh, that was in respect to her uh, original. That, uh, she has a good presentation, but then uh, what is lacking on behalf of China, you know, which I think uh, your institute can also uh, think about, is how to develop a strategy. The need is there, as Shabkat has correctly said. Who is doing what, you know, we have to find out. You know. We have to find out the risk assessment and also what from the risk is coming. But then we have to develop a strategy. That is the need of the hour, and I think uh, a joint strategy is in order now. Uh, so we just uh, uh, agree with what you have mentioned, and after going back, we will definitely just write a very detailed project proposal. At least we put a framework. Yes. Yeah, and then under this we can discuss. We can put the detailed project under this. Yeah, to just uh, make it colorful. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Now I, will, now I would like to announce the break for lunch. Lunch is served at the main leaf restaurant, which is at the ground floor of this hotel. After that lunch, we will join the forum again. Thank you.